From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. One more corner pocket. Now here's Warchant.com's ass on Hunch of Andy and Corey Clark. Wake up. What's up, everybody? It's Wake Up Warchant. Presented by the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. Coming up on today's show, Florida State takes center stage at ACC kickoff in Charlotte. Are the Knolls back for real, for real? And sit-down interviews with Mike Norvell and Jared Verse over here on Radio Row. Wake Up War Champ presented by the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. CPTallyBar.com is a website. You can always hit the QR code on your screen. It'll take you right over to the website where you can check out the daily lunch specials as well as the social menu, if you will. Don't forget Thursday night's bingo, 7 o'clock. Test your bingo skills to win drinks and prizes. And before that, grab some lunch from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's only $8.99 for a cheesesteak sandwich, chicken or steak, and your side dish of choice is either straight fries or curly fries or onion rings or potato salad or maybe broccoli or a side salad or tater tots or perhaps even some freshly cooked potato chips. All that is over at the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill, cptallybar.com, the website, 2475 Appalachian Parkway, the physical address. We don't have a physical address. We're on the Internet, warchant.com, the ultimate symbol sports source. Uh, open all times, all days. We're here for you, so hit that thumbs up button. We certainly would appreciate it if you're on YouTube and if you're listening to us in a podcast format, maybe a five-star rating interview on the Apple devices. Corey Clark joining me from? Uh, it's a good question. I, I think Daphne, Alabama oh. is where we are right now. Stephanie, uh, as we record this, Stephanie is at a Dave Matthews concert in Orange Beach. Ooh. Uh, with some friends. Luckily, I did not have to go. That does not mean I don't like Dave Matthews. I'll, I've been to a few of his shows with Stephanie, and I just I didn't need to do it again. Uh, didn't need to do it again. Uh, so she went with some friends, and I'm uh, I'm at the hotel working, yeah. grinding. My man. I was about to say, I think you might have listened to more of Mike Norvell's local uh, interview with the local media here in Charlotte than I did. I had kind of had to press record and then peel off, and I don't even know what I was doing at that point. But uh, you were able to listen to it and then uh, put a story up there for our subscribers over on warchant.com. Uh, I mean, we talked to him in four different venues today, uh, or yesterday, rather, as you're listening to the podcast. We spoke to him as a local assemblage of uh, media. Then we got him inside of a ballroom setting where he was taking questions from a podium. Then we got him in the breakout room, as we call it, where there's four tables for each individual coach and player to sit at for about 30 minutes to get questions. And then he came and sat down with us at Radio Row. So, so many different uh sort of flavors of discussion with Coach Norvell. What did you take away from listening to him uh, early in the morning, 9 a.m. Wednesday, when he talked about his team here at kickoff, Corey? I mean, it's what we've known and what he's been saying really since the the very end of the Oklahoma game, which was, you know, you come to Florida State for these expectations. They're, they're nothing new to them. Uh, they try not to they, – they, they don't really worry about them. At least that's what they say. It's human nature probably to – I think it's human nature to, like, be con- – like – high rankings and expectations should lift your confidence more. Mm. Um, I just think that's human nature. Like um, maybe last year at this time, some of these players, they might have really believed they were better, but did they believe they were good? Like did they really believe we're about to be finished uh, with 10 wins and be top 10 in the country? Like I think I think expectations can very little, but there's a degree which with, with, with which maybe a, a, a normal human being is like, ah, Maybe we're not as good as I think we are. Are we are? Are we really this good? We seem good, but we have to go prove it. And I, I think these expectations of top five, top ten, whatever they end up being, um, you know, he says that they don't matter, that they – and Jordan Travis says it nonstop, but uh, that it doesn't matter. Jared Verse was saying that too uh, on, on Wednesday. But the reality is I they have to matter a little, right? Just it has to seep into human nature. And I don't think it needs to be negative. Like, if you believe the hype around your team and around your ability, that can be really good for you, too. Like, yeah, man, we are we are good. Mm. We're some bad mofos. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, we really are. Yeah, we're supposed to be ranked that high. I think that can have an emboldening, uh, an emboldening factor as well for a football team. And whether he wants it to seep in there or not, I think a little bit of it has to. Or, Corey, not that I disagree, but like, or is this kind of – derivative of like trust the process like are you so yeah. focused on just working hard every single day being a great teammate being a good human being that like you really 
don't feel this stuff. And I, I, I get it, man. It is human nature to hear this, read this stuff, see the tweets, see the videos, and be like, all right, man, I feel it. But also at the same time, maybe Norvell has it down pat here with these guys. They have a special group. There are leaders in that locker room that it's, yeah, whatever, man. It's all good. Like, hey, what's what's the next lift later today? Or, like, what are we doing later tonight hanging out as a team? And that's the kind of special stuff that, you know, certain programs want to bottle up and, and are able to, like Alabama. And maybe this is the kind of way Florida State figures things out to really get to an elite sustainable level. I hope so, right? Yeah, and I and I think when it comes to Norvell, I you know look, he can say that we don't we like the royal we. He's talking about a hundred people. He doesn't know what's in these guys' brains. Yeah. You know what I mean? He can talk about what he feels, and what the coaching, even the coaching staff. He can't really talk about anybody but his own his own person. He knows what he's trying to instill, which is that, which is the process matters, not the results. And and if you if you keep working as hard as you've been working. At the end of four quarters, you're going to be victorious more than not. Um, you might have, you might be hoisting a trophy at the end of the year if you do exactly what we need to be doing. But you can't, you can't speak in certainties that uh, you you know the hype doesn't affect certain people. And again, I, I'm not even saying the hype affects you in a bad. There's no way anybody on the Florida State football team is overlooking the season opener. Mm. No chance. They were in that game last year, and they know LSU is good. So there's no real chance that the hype will get to them in the sense that they, uh, it, it, in my opinion, it affects them negatively because they know how good LSU is to start the year. But what I, but what I think is cool with Norvell and Jordan Travis actually talked about this when he, uh, when he did Jeff and Tom's show on uh, on Wednesday was, uh, you know, it's not easy to play football at Florida State, like. Mike Norvell doesn't change who he is just because he's now the coach of a top 10 team. Like, you still have to bust your ass. You work really, really hard. That's what Jordan Travis's message was when he was talking about just being a Florida State football player. He's like, look, we have fun. We have lives. I go fishing. It's a good interview. He's like, but, you know, at the end of the day, he works you. Mike Norvell's not taking any days off, and he doesn't let his foot off the gas for a second. So I think that – more than anything, is is the indicative of how a program can sustain itself. Is the guy in charge up top does not let you take your – like, you might take your foot off the gas, but it's not going to be because he let you. Yeah. You might do it behind the scenes, but when you're in front of him and you're in his program, he's going to make sure you work because that's the only way he knows how to live. Yeah. You know, Jordan was sitting uh, at the table beside Jeff and Tom's, and someone was like, man, this is your, your third time here, I think, right? And he's like, yeah, yeah, it sure is. He's like, but it's the first time that I've been here that I haven't been totally stressed out. He's like, the last two years I've been here, I've been, I've been totally stressed out. And I think that comes back to, like, being able to – Did he like, really use those words? Yes. Stressed yeah, out? Wow. Yeah, yeah okay. stressed out. Yeah, I mean, he said it. Um, he said it to Rick Ballou in the Jacksonville 1010XL. Okay. So go listen to it on – if you don't believe me, everybody. Hey, what, no, what are you doing? Well, I'm just uh, saying, you know, just no, no. You fact Go listen check. to Jeff and Tom's first. Fact check, everybody. Verify sure. your sources. But, you know, handling the, the expectations of being here, handling the hype, I think becomes that much more easy and manageable, like when you've – when you've dealt with hurt, man, like when you've dealt yeah. with really bad circumstances like Jordan Travis has and he's your quarterback, when you've you've hoped and prayed for a Division One offer and you had to go to Albany to kind of work your way down here, like all these guys have had really interesting paths to get to where they're at, which I think helps them manage and, and maintain a pretty even keel here. And you'll listen to some of the interviews that we'll play later this week and next week from other players in this conference. Like, they all kind of recognize what Jordan Travis has been in. They're like, yeah, man, like, I know how good Florida State is. Like, I, Jordan Travis is a really good player. Like, I like Jordan Travis. So I, I think there's there's a sense of ease, a calm, a confidence that they've been through the storms. And you've talked about it before, Corey, about, like, if you're, if you're Jordan Travis at this point, man, you have been through quite literally almost everything a college football player can go through. Yeah. And now you have real confidence – so let it hang on. I really feel they did. I mean, there's certain clips that you'll see maybe in the wrap-up video that uh, Jeff and Ira did. Just man, just the confidence they walked around this place. It didn't feel fake. You can't fake this kind of stuff. It's we can see through it, Corey. You and I, because we're real. We keep it hundred. Mm, um, mm. I, I didn't sense any of that, man. And um, I don't. I don't want to say this team is like a on the cusp of having a special season, Corey, because I feel like in the context of, of sports, it always there's some sort of tragedy that always kind of linchpins like the storybook season. But all the stuff they've been through, man, you got benched for like a yeah. broken down quarterback that transferred in and all these sort of things and the 0-4 starts and, and the embarrassment of all this stuff against Jacksonville State. Like they've been through all this stuff, man. And, and the fact that they're ready to kind of seize this opportunity is just uh, 
it, it feels it feels like th- there's no reason to doubt them, man. They are extremely supremely talented. They have great leadership. They have a continuity of a coaching staff that's really headstrong and, and pretty innovative in their approaches, man. So it just feels like things are adding up to where you really have to have a, a extremely weird, peculiar perspective to think that things aren't going to work out well for this program this year. Yeah, uh, you know, injury, yeah, aside from injuries, yes, right? right, is, right. But, well, but yeah. if everybody stays healthy, yeah, it would be – it's hard to think about this being a bad year. Might not be a championship year, but I just think with the talent accrued, and as you mentioned, man, the the perspective they all have, the places they all come from. Jared Verse, I wrote about him on uh, on Wednesday from, the, from that early morning session and him talking about, like, he owes it to the dude that was the zero-star recruit that nobody wanted that was on nobody's radar. He owes it to that guy to, to still work as hard as he possibly can. And he's up to like 260 now. You can read that story on War Chant. Uh, he had some really good quotes. He always does. Um, but, you know, that perspective. And then they're, they're just quite simply, they're, 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 I'm having a hard time remembering throughout the landscape of college football, a star quarterback with Jordan Travis's um, journey, path. Yeah. It just it doesn't happen. Like you mentioned, that wasn't that long ago that he was benched for McKenzie Milton. It was yeah. less than two years ago. Um, and, and I thought he was really interesting. He talked with Jeff about um, about the uh, about the Florida game from that 2021 season and how he couldn't lift his arm above his shoulder. But he still came out and played in the second half because he's like, that's when it was like it's team before me. And I've got to get out there. And he goes, I remember the locker room afterwards and how sad everybody was and how some seniors, that was their last game, and they were devastated. And he he said he he sent out a group text saying we're going to be busting our butts the rest of the way. And that might have been a that might have been something that clicked with him was that game, that moment. He had some nice moments in that 21 season, the Miami one most specifically. But that one, like seeing the hurt and seeing how close they were. So to winning that game and going to a bowl after an 0 4 start, and then also see thinking to himself, man, if I wouldn't have come off the field, we would have won that game. I'm very important to this program. And then last year, you know, he came off the field for what? Well, other than uh, garbage bowl. time, he came off the field for two quarters in the Louisville yeah, game, yeah. and that was about it. He played every other meaningful snap of the entire season. Um, I think something flipped there. And then he also talked about, and I, I know this because I wrote a story that's on our website now about Jordan Travis and how different this third time was for him and how different he is as a quarterback now about how what he learned from the NC State game. Yep, yep. You he know, mentioned that, on the that, podium, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a big deal, man. That's That, that he, he said, you know, kind of how devastating that was and how what a learning process that is to go through something like that and how it changed him. And, you know, after that, you know, they lost the Clemson game. Well, he didn't lose again after that. And even in the Clemson game, he played extraordinarily well in the fourth quarter. Like after that NC State game is, you know, look at the fourth quarters he played the rest of the season, the winning time moments, um, and the Florida and Oklahoma game and Clemson for that matter. If they recover the onside kick, they could have probably won that game. That's how good he was playing at the end of that game. That's just what he that's what he now thinks of himself. That's what he is. He's a guy now. That I think if you he in his head and it's not false bravado and it's not false confidence nope, nope. in his head if you're if you give him the ball with a minute oh eight left one oh eight left down by four at his own nine yard line he has all the confidence in the world he's going to go lead a touchdown drive hmm. man you can't put a price on what that means for an athlete to have that kind of confidence doesn't mean he's always going to succeed you know Mike you remember that famous commercial where Michael Jordan talked about all the game winning shots he missed. Right. But to have that confidence, to have that belief in yourself, and to have done it, to know you can do it, you just can't put a price tag on what that means for a player and what that means for a team rallying around that player to believe in them. Yeah. Man, it's just incredible that they're all back, man. The, the three yep. guys they had up there, they had Jordan, they had Jared, they had Kalen, and the reason we're not and talking Kalen's about – Kalen's story's cool too, right? Like he was one of the guys from Willie. Please go, yeah. Let, let no, it loose, no, man, for real. No, I mean, but that, I was just going to say, that, that's all I really have to say on it. I get to hear much of what he said other than <laughs> it, it is cool that where he came from and what this program was, and now he's getting to stroll around the West End in downtown Charlotte yeah. with his chest out as a returning starting football player for one of the best teams in the country. That's a cool journey for him, too. Well, right? It just it, It's everybody. I mean, Jared from Albany down to here. Uh, yeah. you know, Jordan from Louisville to being buried on a depth chart to being an afterthought to starting quarterback yeah. and Kalen DeLoach 
committing to a, a staff that was already kind of on tenuous ground and, and surviving the ugliest of it all. I mean, if you look at, like, the, the projected starting 22, man, they all have some pretty – uh, not remarkable, but just, you know, this is not uh, – this is a blue blood program, but with like a blue-collar kind of mentality or at least like a blue-collar kind of uh, path to get here. So, again, man, like I sit here and I'm like, is LSU talking about their team the same way? Like do they feel – I mean, I'm sure they you know, they like their Jaden Daniels, they like Harold Perkins, but, man, there's just – like that some of that intangibles, you know, magical special season kind of sauce – that listen, I don't believe in fairy tales, man. I'm I'm single, so that's why I don't believe mm. in them. It's not fair yeah. life. But this team just the you're more... gonna get your princess charming one, one of these, these days, days, buddy. One of these days. She's but the, come. the more you hang around this team, the more you talk to them, man. It just it's just legitimate, authentic stuff that you that doesn't feel hokey. Because again, like I really feel that we could we could look through it, man. We could sense if this was kind of like not false bravado, but just like trying to put on a brave face, man. But again, man, they've been through so much that this stuff now is like, all right, like we deserve this. We're going to enjoy it. And um, what do we got? September 3rd? Yeah. Yeah. Coming up less than uh, what five weeks now, almost five weeks away. Yeah. Um, yeah. Again, practice starts uh, August 3rd, starts next week. So we're, we're right in the throes of it. We're about to be right in the throes of it. And yeah, I, it's a good point you bring up about the blue collar because um, as Jared Burst pointed out, a zero-star high school recruit. I think Travis had three stars, but clearly he was buried on the depth chart behind James Blackman and Alex Hornibrook. What, what I think, what I think people want the next step of this program to be, because I think people are in love with this roster, this roster, yes. because of the stories, because of you don't get guys like from Western Michigan and Albany who come in and become, uh, you know star defensive lineman and we you know jared verse was talking up Braden fisk um about how uh, the motor he has so i well, i'm really really excited to see that kid play in august just to see what that looks like um but you know that you don't have a lot of five star super duper recruits on this team man there's a yeah. lot of self-made guys and guys that have been doubted um which is cool for this year in this program and you want so much for them to have a great season and you want them to accomplish all their goals and and hoist a trophy and Jordan get to New York City. And all that stuff would be such a cool story. And I really do believe that because of where this program was and where a lot of these guys were. But to sustain it, you, you might like a few white-collar athletes. <laughs> guy, you know, guys that didn't have a lot of question marks surrounding them coming out of high school or at their other school, that they come in ready-made, five-star, everybody in the country wanted them out of high school. That's the next step, right? We uh, love this team. But how much of this team feels like a perfect storm of mm, opportunity, yeah. uh, where the program was? Which there aren't Jared Verses out on, you know, uh, uh, just falling off, falling off the uh, a mountain – right in your lap that does not happen um so you this maybe isn't the way to keep sustaining it with all these cool really neat stories and i'm even thinking i keep renardo green keeps coming to mind mm. like that guy's still being here that's like, still another being on the guy. team last yeah. year yeah. but still being on the team last year not mm. bouncing and then becoming such an indispensable player um and, and you know you get a bethune you get the the offensive line being what it is now like all that stuff is awesome but you also want to start getting you know, you're a blue blood with blue collar guys, as we and we like that. You want a mix of that, but you also want maybe a little more white collar sprinkled in there, not out, not just coming strictly from the portal. What a fantastic segue! Roster construction is Florida State's success sustainable through the portal. I asked Mike Norvell that on Radio Row. You hear his interview right after we talk about our good friends at Vitamin Energy. Corey, vitaminenergy.com, promo code WARCHAMPBOGO. That's WARCHAMP, B-O-G-O, means buy one, get one free. Not buy one, get one half off. Buy one, get one free when you use that promo code over on vitaminenergy.com and add an item of equal or lesser value to your cart. Again, it's... It's simplicity, everybody. It's vitamin energy. There's vitamins, there's energy, and no sugar. It's kosher, non-GMO. Improve your mood, improve your focus, improve your workouts, improve your immune response. I'm feeling good, Corey. I've been cranking out content over on our YouTube page, which you all should be checking out. But first, as always, go to vitaminenergy.com, promo code WordChampBogo. Did you use that on the road, Corey? Is, is Stephanie, did, did, did she take a shot before she went and saw DMB? Uh, no, she did not. But yes, I did. Uh, you know, okay. I got to make sure, man. It's we got long. Now, for me, this was a this was a 
Uh, this was just going down the road mm. a few miles. It's only like three and a half hours for me, yeah. so that's a that's a drop in the bucket. But still, you want to make sure he can't get drowsy on the road. And with with vitamin energy, I'm never drowsy. And as you've said, I shake it and take it. Yeah, and it right. tastes delightful. There we go. Uh, VitaminEnergy.com promo code WordChampBogo. Perhaps the only person on time at ACC kickoff, it should be no surprise to anybody, Coach Norvell joining us here on the show. Coach, how are you? Doing great. Uh, you know, it's been a, been a great start to the morning, and, uh, you know, it's always exciting getting a chance to talk about this team or players and, and just looking forward to the season. All right, so I uh, stalked your starting quarterback down in Louisiana when he was at the Manning Passing Academy. Uh, got to talk to him about that experience, and I thought one of the most interesting things that he shared with me was that I don't know if I was pushing him to give me an answer that might sound good for television or not, but he said that, you know, like what's been kind of different about this team and what you guys have had to embrace. And he said that when you guys, I guess, reported back after Memorial Day, that might have been the first time he heard you talk in a team setting about like a national championship. Um, how, how real of an expectation is that? And how exciting is it to know that it, it could be a real expectation for this program? You know, I don't spend a whole lot of time talking about, uh, you know, the, the – the end goal uh, as much. I mean, but I, I understand potential and I understand that, uh, you know, this team, you know, there's no limits to what I'm going to put in front of it of what they can, of what they can accomplish, but it's still about the work. It's still about, you know, the daily focus. And, you know, I do think it's important to, to realize while we're, why we are all here. And, you know, you come to Florida State because you want to win a championship. And, you know, this, that, is a, that is a standard within the program that you look back over the years. It is what makes our place special. And, uh, you know, it's hard. It's challenging. There's going to be a lot of experience that we face. And we've got to prepare ourselves, um, you know, just to be our best in, in, in all things. And if you know, anybody can sit there and talk about it, you can sit there and you can look at, the, look at a trophy. Um, but ultimately, if you're not putting in and, and doing the steps necessary, um, then it won't matter. And so, you know, I do think there's times and, you know, I've, I've tried to try to be very specific in those moments uh, to, to make sure that we realize that, they're, you know, we're all here for, for a common goal and a common purpose. And uh, there's going to be a it's gonna be a heck of an experience and heck of a heck of a journey in front of us. But, um, you know, as long as we can you know, be the best of, of you, know, you know, who we are and continue to grow in that. And then, like I said, there's no limits to what I think that this team can accomplish. You know, we just have to go do it. I want to get your feeling for roster construction. You know, for so long, obviously, everything had to be done, grassroots, recruiting high school athletes, but now with the portal, you can kind of mix and match and, and fill in some gaps immediately. Everyone says you still though, you still need to be able to replenish through, through high school. I mean, do you, though? I mean, have you not kind of maybe shown the country, inadvertently maybe, that, like, you really can build a winner, a sustainable program through the portal, not exclusively, but a pretty solid share of it. Well, I mean, I think, you know, you, you look at our last year's class, we're still 65 percent, you know, high school signees and, you know, 35 percent guys that came from uh, the portal or a different, uh, a different path. And, uh, you know, it is, you know, I think it's all specific to your team and where you are and what, you know, what you are, are looking to where you're looking to grow, how, you know, if there's areas of leadership that's necessary, if there's areas of experience that's necessary, you know, um, you know I, I love the guys that we've been able to bring in. I'm excited about the development of the, of you know, of our young players and what I know their futures are going to be, uh, you know, through that competition too. And, um, you know, we've, you know, we've signed some great players out of the portal. And, you know, I think that's something that when, when a young man sees, you know, how it's been done, they can easily visualize, you know, the opportunity that will be in place for them there. And, um, you know, they embrace, you know, who we are and what we're about. And, uh, you know, a lot of the guys we've gotten out of the portal have had multiple years. And so it's not just like a, a, a one year. And we've had great one year guys, too. So, um, yeah, thank, yeah, thank you for that. And him, care. And uh, you know, so we've had some of those guys that um, you were able to have remarkable years and in, in just one, you know, one time. But, uh, you know, for us, it's it's about building the, the best team. And, you know, it, it will look, you know, specific to what each team each year needs and uh, um, but uh, I think we've done a great job you know, really in, in both in both parts of it and uh, you're building a team that you know, has a great culture and uh, you know guys that you're know, gonna play well off of each other it just feels like in the coaching fraternity like change is a really difficult thing to wrap your arms around it's like this is the way it's always been so it has to be this way and I don't know if it's like bravery or innovation or whatever but like the fact that you kind of embrace this and it's worked out just seems to be something that you know 
got to kind of maybe walk out on a bit of a limb to, to make this all work out. No, I mean, like. it, it's, well, it still goes back to the, the best fit, you know, and that's why I know I say that a lot, but it is, it is our reality. And, you know, there's been plenty of programs that have taken a lot more transfers than we have. You know, I just think that we've been right on who we've brought and, you know, the way they fit and the, the impact they've made. Um, and ultimately, I feel the same way. You know, they're in the high school ranks, and it, sometimes, you know, as you see those guys develop, you know, you know, throughout the process, and we've had some unbelievable success stories there as well. And um, you know, it's just, you know, we're going to be willing to do the work, you know, to to put together the best team to fill the needs that, that we think that we have each year, and um, you know, something we're going to continue to work and uh, to accomplish. Questions from the people, since we are the people show, Coach. Uh, how has Winston Wright looked? One of uh, our subscribers, Spear0805, would like to know. Uh, no, uh, Winston's done a, done a great job. And we knew, you know, coming in this year, there was going to be, you know, the, the, the spring spring practice would have a certain look to it. There was going to be some, some things that we were going to modify. But we knew, really, as you got to here in towards the back part of the summer, uh, that was a chance that, that we were going to see, you know, him really take another step. And, uh, you know, I know, you know, Coach Storms, you know, was – we're out there on the field the other day, and I mean, he's hitting PRs in his in his you know top speeds, and just the the workload and and all those things. So I'm excited to see him get out there and in, in, in fall camp, and you know, we, like I said, we got a lot of competition at that position. But I think you know, you know, Winston's done a a great job and is feeling you know a lot more confident in the things that he's being asked to do, and just uh, you know, going out there and playing the game. And you know, he's just a, a special young man, and it's gonna be a great story. And you know, excited to be able to to be a part of it with him. We can't confirm whether or not it actually is Destin Hill, but they go by Destin Hill on our message boards, and they want to know how much sort of autonomy does Jordan have this kind of season to do stuff at the line, whether it's audibles, check out of stuff. I mean, how much do you trust him? How much can he do yeah, I mean, outside that, of your that control? That was a big part of uh, of last year, and you know, it's for, for me, it's about to give me, you know, to help provide a menu, and you know, to understand, you know, the things that the times where the, we might want to get in a better play versus a certain look, or what that, you know, how that dynamic is. But Jordan is. You, He's one of the smartest quarterbacks that I've that I've been around. And he's a guy that takes a lot of pride and ownership in that, and um, so that's going to be something we continue to do uh, within our offense. And um, you know, it, it it we've done a good amount of it, you know, this last year. And I think you know, just as he continues to grow, I mean, it's going to be able to open more doors. I'm not going to ask you about Daryl Jackson because we're running out of time, Coach. We're going to go right to the speed round. Five questions as quickly as you possibly can go, unless you want to ask. <laughs> Can I ask about Daryl Jackson? I mean, is it one of those things where do you guys check in like every yeah. week or every yeah. two weeks? And we know you're doing as yeah. much as you possibly can. It's one of those things you can control what you can control, and you know, it's uh, you know, we're we're hopeful that this is something that gets resolved you know, you know sooner than later. But uh, you know, I know you know we're go we're going through it. All right, speed round time, fun times. So here we go, Coach. Up tempo. How many career receptions did Mike Norvell have at the University of Central Arkansas? 213. My man, correct. <laughs> a receiver's uh, going to know what he did. <laughs> uh, number two, uh, what record was set in Tulsa's 63-7 GMAC Bowl win over Bowling Green in 2008? Is that most points in a bowl game? No, your no. quarterback, Paul Smith, capped off 14 straight 300-yard 300, 300 passing oh, games as an NCAA right. yeah. record. There you go. That's Paul Smith. Tell him you said hello. Coach. Great player. Uh, who said character, discipline, and work ethic are all ideals Mike not only stresses but holds himself to as well. His ability to connect and motivate young people is unparalleled. Barack Obama. I'm kidding. Todd Graham. <laughs> Your old mentor said that. It's nice of him. How many points did Florida State score in their win against Miami last year? 45. How many points did they score against Florida in their win last year? 45. My man. Uh, and can you give the folks at home, can you either give us a book, a music, or a television show recommendation? Uh, you know, we uh, like a couple of books that uh, that we've read are actually reading as a team. Um, we're reading a book this this fall, the, the Twin Thieves. Okay. So, right. Coach, I know I'm the, your seventh favorite guy on the beat, but thanks for taking time out to do this. <laughs> Appreciate it, Haslam. Thank you. Have a great day. Go Knowles. Knuckle up, y'all, and go to mybookie.ag and use the promo code WARCHANT and take advantage of their special giveaway offer. MyBookie.ag has always been a proud supporter of mixed martial arts and its athletes, and what better way to celebrate than a giveaway? MyBookie's teamed up with Dustin Poirier to give away two autographed Everlast gloves and the UFC's official Heartbeat Hot Sauce kits. It's Poirier's own special concoction. He's taking on Justin Gaethje this weekend. Who you got, Gaethje or Poirier? Let me know, Corey. To get in on the contest, all you need to do is have a successful deposit on the website, mybookie.ag, in the past 90 days, like the contest post, which is in the item description of the podcast, and follow the MyBookie account on social media, whether it's Twitter or Instagram. 
To look at the full contest details like rules and prize table, you have to visit mybookie.ag slash giveaway. Well, you don't have to, but you can. It's there for your enjoyment if you would like. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere. Over at mybookie.ag, use that promo code WARCHANT. A man who's highly in demand. We're going to have a hard out. you got to go on the network, talk to the people in the, in the nation on camera. Jared Verse joining us. Jared, how are you, man? I'm good today. I'm real good. How about you? Man, if, 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 if I felt as good as you looked, I would, uh, I'd feel amazing right now. Man. Sharp, <laughs> sharp, man. A little bit jealous. Thank you. Um, let's get to it right now because uh, you got to get to the set here. You're right now 6'4", 260. Apparently, you've gained seven pounds. Uh, everyone's super excited about that. Can you say for certain you've maintained your speed? Yeah, I, for first when I first talked to Coach uh, Storms about getting in that weight, I was kind of nervous. He was like, "It'll be fine. Like you're gonna get adjusted to." It. I'm like, "Uh," and I ended up gaining it because I was 255 for most of the season, and I hit 260. And I, I honestly, I feel a little bit faster because I've gotten so accumulated to it. So honestly, I feel like, to me personally, I got faster. Did you want to put the weight on, or was that a discussion you guys had as a staff where they thought that'd be best for you? I, mean, I talked to Coach Storms, and he asked me, he was like, do you want to put weight on? Do you want to drop weight? Like, what do you want to do? Because they, they maintain what I want, basically. I was like, honestly, I want to gain a little bit, you know, play the run a little bit better. He's like, all right, let's do it then. If people only really knew what you had to go through last year, I think they'd be really surprised, but you still managed to go out there and play your hardest and, and impact games. If you're healthy this year, what are you capable of? I think there's no one, if I'm fully healthy the whole year, with how much work I've put in, with how much my teammates believe in me, with how much Coach Novell, all the coaches on the staff have put into me, I don't think anyone is able to stop me. How exciting is that, that you're, you're kind of betting on yourself coming back this year. You were mocked as a first-round pick, according to Todd McShay. You're kind of betting on yourself, the fact that things seem to be lining up. You've got the team around you. You feel good. You've put on the weight. How great does it feel like waking up every single morning and knowing what you have ahead of you? It feels amazing, especially when I remember like during COVID, I was a smaller guy. I was about 200 pounds back then. And looking back at it, like how much I've grown, this is everything I've wanted, everything I've paid for. Like Just being in an interview like this, I'm like, I used to think, like sitting in my room, like, all right, here's what I'm going to say at this moment and everything like that. It's all out the window because now I'm just talking. But. So we know about you. We know about Patrick Payton. Uh, some of the folks on the message boards, they want you to talk up some of your other teammates. Who else should they be looking out for? Who's going to be able to help you guys out produce when you might need a, blow, need a, might need a blow or a breather at the defensive end spot, do you think? Oh, good thing you said defensive end. I was about to go crazy on the tackles. Uh, oh, hey, you can talk <laughs> about them too, man. And how are they going to – let us know. We're not, we try to think we know a lot about football, but like, how, are, how are Braden and Fabian and Daryl and, and Joshua Farmer going to make your lives easier as well? I'm not going to lie. I didn't realize how fast Braden was until he was right next to me running. And, like, we're running, and he's, like, we're going at each other, like, going back and forth racing. He's right there. I'm, like, bro, how are you this fast? Like, you're, like, 300-something pounds. Fabo, he's coming back off injury. That guy is insane. Gilbert, talking just about the defensive ends. Gilbert is someone I can really much rely on. Like, I'm looking at that guy. I'm, like, all right, like, he's a dog. Like, he can really handle business. He brings something to the table we don't – I can't bring. Like, he's had a little finesse, a little bit of something different. Then we talk about Byron Turner. But he's the only the end who – if when we race, it's like a 50-50 shot. Like, I want to, I think All I can right. beat him, but he thinks he's so fast. I'm, I'm for the dust him. I'm going to do it to him so bad. <laughs> so I, I hung out with Jer uh, rather Jordan down in Louisiana when he's at Manning Passing Academy, and he said that I guess when you guys came back maybe for Memorial Day and you had a team meeting, that might have been the first time he's ever heard Coach Norvell, like, explicitly talk about a national title. I know you guys went into last season wanting and expecting to win every game. What feels different? Does anything feel different about the expectations and, and what's realistic this year? Honestly, everything feels realistic this year. We can get whatever we want as long as we're willing to put in the work. So far, we've been doing that. But like Jay Trump said, for that meeting, we were in there and we have a national championship of all ours, like the three that we have on the wall. And we coaches pointing everybody like, you guys want that. You got to work for it. So we every day since then, we've been working for it. Everybody gets out there. Some guys get tired. You know, they might like fall behind a little bit, but we make sure we stand by a standard, and we're going to bring you to that standard. Listen, I wish I embraced hard work. How, how does one embrace hard work? You just got to love it. Like, me, me personally, everybody's got their different reasons for loving hard work. Some people want money. Some people just want credit. Me, I've always just wanted to be the best. I've wanted to be the best at my position, the best me I can be, but that's, like, the biggest thing. I just want to be the best me I can be. So all during COVID, when I was, like, smaller, younger, everything like that, all I did was work out the hot Arizona summer, yeah. and that, it gets hot down there, yeah. 107 degrees. I'm like, all right, I got I to work hard. Like, I got I to keep going. I got to push myself. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. All right. All right, we got one minute with you. We got to go quick. We're going to go up-tempo. Five quick Let's questions. Uh, representing Dayton, who was not born in Dayton? Roger Clemens, Chris Collinsworth, or Kirk Herbstreet? Let's see. Oh, who was the first one? 
Roger Clemens. I want to say Roger Clemens. He was born in Dane. I thought it was a Texan. It was actually Kirk Herbstreet was not born in there. Uh, how many kids does Coach John Papuchas have? Was it five? Four, yeah, five. five, five. You got it, my man. <laughs> uh, what Tallahassee bar invented Y bombs? Ooh, is it a uh, is it Township? No, Yanni's. Yanni's. Yanni, I don't even know Yanni's. I heard I you're, you're a college town guy. That was an unfair question. Ooh, my college. bad. <laughs> uh, who has the Florida State single season record for sacks? Oh. Oh my God! I can remember his face. I can't remember his name. Or do you know the number of sacks he had? What was it? Twenty-two. Nineteen and a half. Peter Bolwer. Peter Bolwer. <laughs> Last one. True or false? Your first collegiate start was at Albany in the season finale in 2021. False. Uh, According to your bio, it's true. Season finale? Yeah. No, nah, nah, it was. Uh, we played in the spring. We had four games in the spring. Ah, yeah. all right. Well, they got it wrong. He had eight solo against Stony Brook. But you had like two other games where you oh, went no, crazy. Actually, that's and true. To... No, actually, that's true. No, hold on, that is true. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I forgot about that one. I forgot. I, th I thought I started the game before. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're done with you, man. Thanks so much for doing the show. We appreciate it. Have, Have fun. a good one. Yep. So somehow Jared Verse got seven pounds heavier, Corey, and yeah. says he's still as fast, maybe faster. And apparently, Braden Fisk can keep up with him. So like, good luck, offensive line, whoever's playing these guys. Like they've. They have some high-level athletes, and it's uh, it's fun to think about what they all can be if they're all healthy and, and coming together. Because yeah. it sounds like uh, Jared also kind of admitted that he's was pretty banged up last year, man. And we saw as much; we couldn't really talk about it. But just imagine, you know, his confidence came through in that interview about it. he knows that if he's healthy, um, like pretty much no one he's going to go up against is going to be able to block him. And it didn't feel like he was bragging; it was kind of like matter of factly. He's like, yeah. Sounds about right. No, they won't consistently block him. I mean, that's the truth. That's not yeah. bragging if you're good. Yeah. Um, and he is. And it's the truth. Like, so, you know, at the in that Louisville game, which I think was the second quarter, maybe the first quarter, it was it was in the Louisville game, just like Jordan. You know, he injured his knee. We all saw it. Uh, at the time, the way he was acting, the way he, I think he thought he had torn his ACL was out for the year. Um, it did not turn out to be that way. But he played with a knee brace the rest of the season. He clearly wasn't 100% on that knee. And yet he still finished with 17 tackles for loss. He was second in the country. I think second in the power five with four games of two and a half tackles for loss. Uh, he was 10th in the nation with tackles for loss per game. He had nine sacks in his first year of college football, uh, division one college football. Now imagine him, you know, he said he's up to 260. Um, he's a big dude anyway. So putting six pounds on a frame like that, you're not really going to notice it. Um, but he said he's still he's as fast, or actually he said he's faster yeah. than he was last year. When, when you can see that, right? If, they, if he build some leg muscles, he could probably get a a, 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 a tiny smidge faster. <laughs> but he is a uh, an absolute freak, and if he's healthy, more than just the six pounds of strength or he being a little quicker, if he's just a hundred percent on that knee, I mean, what he in the LSU game was the only time we've seen him against a real team for where he was a hundred percent. And I think he had two sacks and a blocked field goal. Like that, you know what I mean? And that gets a good team. Um, so th that's what I expect from the guy. I expect a guy that's going to get, uh, you know, he's going to get double teamed some. The tight ends aren't going to go out all the time. But he should impact every game he's in. And he's going to be, he should be the best defensive player on the team, clearly, and one of the best defensive players in the country if he stays healthy. That's how much I, we've seen it, man. We saw it last year in the preseason. That burst isn't normal. And we wondered as we watched it, right, Aslan? You remember, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, man, that's really impressive. But can he do it in a game? Yeah. Can he do it when guys are really trying to block him and a quarterback's really trying to avoid him? This isn't Albany. He looks really fast in this setting. What's it going to be like in front of 80? And then there he goes against LSU and had that game and still had an all-ACC type year, even without, being, even without two fully healthy functioning knees. So. Yeah. It's really, it's really exciting to think about what he can be if he's healthy. He graded out at 84 against LSU, seven pressures, yeah, two sacks, five hurries. Good night at the office. So, good stuff. And um, we should before we get out of here, Norvell was asked about Daryl Jackson, right? Yeah, we asked him. I asked him about it here on the pod, and just you know, they were on it, but nothing new. So checks every day, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's. We, we're getting – let's go. You know what I mean? Like, right. let's get this thing. You want to know one way or the other. It would be crazy if he didn't get it, but we are now almost in August, man. And this yeah. kid has been in Tallahassee since December, right? Yeah, right? about. January? So. Yeah, January. Maybe. So uh, so this needs – I mean, this is ridiculous. They need to 
They need to. This is a kid's life they're dealing with. It's not whatever they're trying to investigate. And I know we'll sit here in you know in the in late July and say, well, it's bureaucratic, it's red tape, it's just how bureaucracies work. It takes time. This is the kid's life, man. Yeah. Like one way or the other, and we all want it to be the one way that we're all rooting for. But either way, there's nothing you should be looking into now in late July that you couldn't have looked into in late December. So quit screwing around and dragging your feet and let the kid know for sure that he's going to get to play in 2023. It's Boom. ridiculous. They heard that in Indianapolis, I bet. Yeah, now you got – Resonates. They, they suspended Jim Harbaugh so they can get back to filling out waiver requests now. Did so. you see who Michigan's playing in those first four games? Um, they're all at home. They got Nebraska and Rutgers. Those might be tricky ones. But then the other – the first two are like, eh. That'd be nice. Nebraska it's, could be tricky. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't know that Rutgers is going to be tricky at, at Michigan. I mean, it's nice to start off the season with a four-game homestand. So, <laughs> you know. Big Ten dollars. And then last thing, Corey. You know, you, you're going to listen to the interview after we post the show. I'm sure. But Winston Wright posting PRs, personal records in the weight room. People talk about you know guys that were sleeping on. It's like man, mm-hmm. we feel like we've talked about every single guy on the show this entire off season. But, you know, Winston Wright's one of those candidates. And then, you know, from what we saw during spring, Fentrell Cypress, you know, didn't necessarily seem to be anything special or really kind of flash consistently at us during practice. But, like, his name resonates out here in Charlotte, like at ACC kickoff. Like, that was a question uh, that Norvell got asked a few times about, like, how Fentrell Cypress has looked. So maybe another guy to kind of uh, put back in your guys' radar, um, Again, you know, we'll see how they look when we get back to practice, but I know you're all wondering how one of your shiny new toys uh, transfer-wise looks and then uh, how Winston Wright's coming along. So sounds like PR's in the weight room. That, that probably sh- should bode well for being able to block it out of your mind, get on the field, and, and maybe find and reclaim some of your long-lost uh, skills and power. So we'll see it soon enough, man. we got the schedule and everything. We're like, what, a w- week away probably from seeing them practice? We can change? Yeah, August 3rd, whatever day. That's Thursday, right? We got Wednesday. We got the luncheon with the coaches yeah. that yeah. we do, the preseason lunch where we get to interview all the assistants, which is awesome. I, there's no other schools in the country doing stuff like this. And then Thursday is the start of practice. So yeah. and we're, all, we're off and running. We are. Full steam ahead to Orlando. We are. Uh, this is a wrap for us for the week. We've got uh, several interviews with players that are not on Florida State's roster, but I think you'll enjoy them. We'll package those along with some recruiting updates that we hope to have for you when we get back on Monday. Again, check out warchant.com. Charles Lester, five-star defensive back out of Sarasota, now at Venice High School, uh, set to make his announcement this weekend. Michael Langston will be all over it, as will Matt Lasser. Also, Elite Camp in Tallahassee this weekend. I might actually head over there and help out Matt. Uh, since Michael will be down uh, covering the commitment, maybe have some video of them, uh, some of these athletes, some of these recruits performing in Dope Campbell Stadium. So we're not going anywhere, but I'm getting back in a car with Ira, or not Ira, with Matt and driving seven hours down to Tallahassee. So it might take What's a day. What's Ira doing? Is he flying? No, he's going to go uh, He's going to go to Baltimore with the family. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's going to go check the O's out. Yeah, that's right. O's. I think they're playing the Yankees. Yes, yeah, there they you go. are. They All are. Right, Ira. So, um, no show for you Friday, but we'll have a show on Monday and maybe a couple of shows to fill the time between then and the uh, press conference with the coaches. It'll be interviews from uh, ACC kickoff, but we're sure you'll like them. Because, hey, and is there anything like, you want to say to Shane and Michelle as they get ready oh, for their, uh, their vows? Just um, love one another um, and just mm. be great to each other. Be excellent. Be excellent mm. to each other. Well said, Aslan. Well said, A-Train. He's Corey. I'm Aslan. Thanks to Coach Mike Norvell and Jared Verse for hopping on the show as well. Thank you for listening to Wake Up Board Chant, presented by the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill.